Before I get to preaching, uh, people have asked me, I've not been miraculously healed. These are contacts, just so you know. You know, I still have classes. I'm just trying to get ready for uh, something this week, so just FYI. So the question can be asked with every sermon, but I guess an entire sermon series, so what? I, mean, I think it's a fair question. So what? Why? Why is it important? Why does it matter? And then I guess the better question is, how do you take a series or a sermon and turn it into transformation? How do you actually change your life? What does that look like? How does God work into that process? What does it look like for us to actually have a change? Well, the answer is consistency and intentionality. That's what carries us to transformation. To be consistent and intentional. We talked about spending time with Jesus, learning from Jesus and doing what he did. So often we just stop on number two. We want to learn more about Jesus. We want to learn what he said, but the doing what he did portion is kind of hard. And, and I don't think it's supposed to be easy, but I don't think it's as hard as we think it is. I think the reality is, is that we just have to actually try. We have to, to be consistent and intentional in how we do it. And um, a really good way for this to understand this process is called a rule of life. Um, you have a rule of life. You might not know you have a rule of life, but you do. And we all had one at some point, right? When we were in school, school develops a rule of life for you. That you wake up, you go to school, maybe you have breakfast, and then you have class, you have homeroom. Then you go to your classes, and then at some point, you have lunch, and maybe there's a recess, you know? Maybe there's two. I don't know. It's, it's great. When I was in kindergarten, we still had naps. It was amazing. You, but you have these, these flows that happen. And then once you're done with lunch, you go to more classes, and you go home, or you go to practice, or you, do, you need to do homework, or you don't do homework, whatever it is, that, that's between you and God. But eventually, you go to sleep, right? And you can tell when you're in that rhythm you're, you don't have to think about, okay, what's my next thing? Your feet just walk to your next class, right? That's what happens. And even outside of school, you have a rule of life right now with how you do your life. And that rule of life helps us. We have a trajectory that we want to be on, or maybe a trajectory we don't want to be on, but we're there anyway, right? And that rule of life compounds that trajectory to keep us going the direction we want to be. That's why if you want to do something new, you have to add things or take things away from your rule of life. Here's the hard truth. Belief doesn't really make Christians. Jesus said the demons, they know who Jesus is. Belief isn't, isn't the thing that makes Christians. Practicing does. Doing what Jesus told us to do is what makes Christians. It's not just the belief. Yes, we have to believe in who Christ is. We have to believe in the life, death, the resurrection. We have to believe in the creed. We have to believe these things. But how often have you believed and nothing's changed? We have to actually do it. So I'm going to give you some hints, some guidelines, some ways in which you can take these non-practices we've talked about and practice them in your rule of life. Let's do this. Here we go. First one, Sabbath. Once per week, use a day to stop, rest, and delight in worship. And maybe it's like Brian said, instead of a full day, because I, I can't imagine taking off a full day in the week. That, that's something that is so foreign to us, right? Like I had days off, but that's when I, I do the things at home that I haven't been doing this entire week, right? So maybe it's an hour. Maybe it's just finding times that you can grab onto and say, this is for resting, for delighting in God, and for worship. Next, prayer. Daily prayer time that is focused on listening. We talked about that one-sentence prayer last week, right? What's this way that we can just be in prayer that we don't talk as much because we want God to speak to us? It's a daily practice. Next, fasting. We had a fast a couple weeks ago. It was super cool. People had a lot of fun experiences with that. What if we did that weekly, a weekly fast to allow us to just be in the presence of God and to listen and to hear? Because fasting is denying ourselves and telling ourselves to be quiet. Solitude. Can you do 30 minutes a week of silence to wait on God? 
I struggled with this one because at first I had an hour, and I said, Justin, can you do an hour <laughs> of silence a week? And I said, well, probably not, Justin. It's probably not the thing you could do. So I pulled it down to 30 minutes. I think we can agree. 30 minutes, you waste more time than that in a lot of other ways. What if we did 30 minutes of silence waiting on God? Scripture. The key with Scripture is we all know we're supposed to read it, but we don't all do it. And it's because it's this this thing we've made it to be, right? We assume that in order to read Scripture, we have to have a certain seat in our home, and we have to pull out the old leather-bound Bible. We have to sit there, and we have to read four to five chapters, and that's the only way the Scripture reading can work. But you can make Scripture reading unavoidable and easy daily. You can make it to where it's the first thing that pops up on your screen whenever your alarm goes off to read Scripture. So find a way to make it a habit that even little old you can ignore. <laughs> because daily scripture reading is where we learn the most about God. Community. One meal a week outside the people of your family. A, a, a meal a week with someone who does not live in your home. Now, it used to be a really easy thing. And in the past four years, it's gotten harder and harder. I mean, when's the last time you actually went out and sat down with a meal with people that you don't live with? But that's how we practice community because it's over the table that we learn more about each other and learn how we live our lives together. Simplicity. The end of the week, do an inventory of what could have been cut from your week. Now, this is a caveat to this. I got a lot of text messages this week that said, sorry, Pastor Justin, with pictures of people mowing their lawns based on my sermon last week. If you weren't here, I talked about, you know, you can let the lawn go. No one could do that. And that's okay. I, Jesus still loves you. I do too, right? It's okay. But what is that thing? Because I think we can all look at our week this past week and say, okay, that's something I probably didn't need to do, and I can get some time back to begin to make our lives more simple. Generosity. You can give like we're supposed to to the church. But let's say that that's something that you're just not there yet. One of the things you can also do with generosity is you can keep a package of things in your car that when you see a homeless person, that you can give them of, of food or sanitary wipes or just a couple of dollars cash. I never carry cash with me. A way to show generosity in such a way that it's, it's outside of your normal ways that you do things. Hospitality. Daily make eye contact and learn the name of a stranger. Now, the introverts in the room are like, this is the worst thing in the world, right? This is the, I could think of 40 other things, Justin, that I would rather do than this. But how important is it to you that people know your name? When I was commissioned, um, I went up on the stage in front of all of the annual conference. My family was there. And on the little card that had my information, it said Jason Kaysen. <laughs> now, I'm a good sport about these things. Other people in my life are not. So RCS, Lori Ben Glipson, she went and got people and brought them to me to apologize to me. <laughs> people were being drugged by my CS to me at the, at the end of this conference to say they're sorry. And I hope that never happens again. Um, but how important is your name? That's how important someone else's name is to them. So getting to know their name, then if you see them again saying, hey, it's a life changer. And it shows just the way in which we're supposed to relate to the world. I think that's the last one, right, Rob? I thought so, Matt. Thank you. These are small 1% changes that God can meet us in and bless us in. The focus is to spend time with God, learn from God, and do what God told us to do. This is what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things I have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Here's the reality. This, this scripture verse is saying, you can sit here, oh my, you can sit here right now and make a declaration between you and God that you're going to make a change. And then by the time you get into your car, you've already forgotten it. But we have to do more than just write it down. We have to do more than just make a statement. We have to actually live into the reality. We have to watch. We have to be intentional. Because if we don't, they will all slip away. When you came in today, you got a little bookmark. Go ahead and pull that bookmark out. Here's the other harder part about a series, is that you want to do everything, right? Everything sounds so great. Everything sounds so awesome. That's our job as pastors. We're supposed to make it sound awesome. But you can't do it all. It's not possible. It's about one change. So what is the one change 
that you can do. What one practice can you make a part of your rule of life? The best part is that once you get one practice done, your body and your mind recognizes I can do more than one. But what's the one? And what's the lowest hanging fruit for you? What is the thing that you're like, I can make a really, really minute change to make this happen? Maybe it's that 30 minutes in silence and you have a commute and you can say, yeah, I can just turn off the radio. When I turn off the radio in my car, I start talking to myself. That's a weird, (laughs) there has to be noise, right? But maybe that's for you. Maybe that's the answer, right? What is the lowest hanging fruit? Write that on that card and put it somewhere that you'll see it every morning. That way you can intentionally be reminded of what God wants you to do. In the way of uh, next steps, our memory verse is Psalm 46, 10a, as Brian said, uh, be still and know that I am God. Maybe that's part of that as well. And then the first, uh, uh, next step is a daily prayer. I will daily pray and reflect on Psalm 46, 10 by reciting it eight times each day and shortening the prayer by one word each time. And the second is like it. I will choose one of the practices from this series and practice it so that I can become more like Jesus. That's our goal, folks, is to be more like Jesus, to do what he told us to do so that we as Christians, Christ-like people, can be part of the transformation of the world. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day and for all the things that you have taught us through this series, God. But we know that if we just hear it and do not do it, it will not make the transformation that you've been calling us to. So we pray that you would give us not just ears to hear and eyes to see, but hands and feet to do what you have called us to do so the world may come to know who you are. So God, help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.